Hey, what's up guys? I want to uh, take this knife apart for you on camera. We're going to be experiencing this together. This was a, a folder that was used to baton through wood in the open and lock position. So it was uh, heavily damaged. There's a lot of blade play. And you can hear it. Now that's vertical play. There's also a little side to side, but that's, you know, it can be adjusted out. But the vertical play cannot. And I wanted to uh, do a little video taking this apart and taking a look at it. Um, together to see exactly what got damaged and why and talk about it a little bit uh, You're gonna see an unboxing video. That's where this knife came from uh, viewer had sent me a couple knives Which are really very nice of him um, So I'll do reviews on a couple of the other ones, but I don't know what order I'm posting the videos But anyway, that's where this knife came from. He said yep I screwed up I used this folder to baton through some stuff and it got some blade play and I can't stand blade play So here you go. Enjoy the knife. <laughs> that's basically how it went so thank you. That was very nice of you. This is a uh, a bird Kara Kara too. Um, it's uh, you know when you have a new one, it's a pretty good knife for the money, absolutely. But anyway, it's not a review. I just want to take this apart and look at it with you guys and talk about it a little bit. Um, folders are not meant to be used in general. Now, yes, of course, nowadays there's some beefy, massive folders that you could beat the crap out of and they'll be okay. But generally speaking, folding knives are a more delicate knife. You cannot beat the crap out of it. You can't just wield it any way you want and expect it to always work. With a folding knife, we obviously have multiple parts, fragile parts. You have internal pieces. You have, you know, um, a lot of different tolerances. With a fixed blade, you know, a, a good full tang fixed blade, it's one sharp piece of metal, okay? in a specific shape to make it you know, more convenient for you. And more times than not, it has some uh, sort of handle. Um, so it's a little easier or more comfortable to hold. But that's basically what it is. It's a sharp, solid piece of metal. Folders are a lot more complicated, obviously. There's all kinds of different parts. Our metal is just our blade. And our handle is just a different way to enclose that blade for a more compact size. So we don't have to carry something that's so big. That's the convenience of a folding knife. That's why a lot of us have folding knives. That's it. it. That's all it's about, is just having a smaller package so it's easier to carry. That's it. So, um, this one was abused. It was used for batoning. Now, I, uh, I've done videos in the past. I've done like um, destruction videos, and I even did a Microtech review. And in that review, I batoned with it open and locked. That was specifically for testing purposes. If uh, I have a regular knife that I'm not testing, I just happen to have it in my pocket, and I need to baton with a folder, of course I wouldn't be batoning with it open and locked. You, you know, folder, folding knives are not really meant to be used really, really hard. Now, of course, you know, that being said, there are plenty of them on the market these days that feature, you know, half inch steel stock for the blade and just ridiculously overbuilt with, you know, the craziest locks. And yeah, sure, you can do a lot more with folders these days than you could, you know, say, 10, 15 years ago. But at the end of the day, nothing beats a full tang fixed blade as far as just beating the crap out of it. Nothing's going to happen to it, you know, unless your edge gets dull. Big deal. You need to sharpen it up again. But folders, you can damage them. They're the more delicate option between a fixed blade. Fixed blade and a folder. Why would you pick one over the other? It's very simple. The only advantage a folder has, really, besides a fixed blade, because you got fixed blades of all kinds, don't forget, all types of sizes, all everything else. The only advantage is a more compact package. That's why we like fixed blades. Or excuse me, <laughs> that's why we like folders. So we can stick it in our pocket, so we can you know, clip it to our pocket. It's more compact, that's it. If folders didn't exist, you know, you wanted this size knife, you'd have to figure out a way to carry this size knife and it'd be a little bit more inconvenient to do so. You'd have to have it in a sheath, it would be a, you know, literally larger. So at some point, you know, humankind said, hey, you know what, let's just make this so that it folds in. I don't have to carry a sheath because the blade's not exposed. I'm not going to cut myself. And guess what? It's half the size. Awesome. Folders. There you go. That's why they were born. Anyway, this one was uh, abused. And we're going to take it apart and look at it uh, together and see what happened. Now, anyway, what I was saying about folders and batoning is that you can baton with folders, but you have to disengage the lock. All right? So the handle just happens to be there. But what you're essentially you're left with is your fixed blade, just your piece of steel. So when you have your stick or whatever, your baton, and you're beating the crap out of it, you don't want to put any pressure on the locking mechanism or the internals of the handle, or the handle itself, for that matter. So if you disengage the lock, whatever it may be, okay, so it's no longer locked, 
the handle's just kind of there, but now you have a solid, sharp piece of steel, and you can beat the crap out of that, and it's nothing's gonna happen to it. But the problem is, once you engage that lock, okay, because it is more convenient, you actually have a handle now, um, when you're hitting the back of this, you know, that, that vibration is going through this blade, all the way down into, in this case, your lock back, okay, into the internals, and it's gonna screw those pieces. It's gonna, you know, screw with the tolerances. It could uh, bend pieces out of shape. It could break pieces, you know, fracture or shatter them. So you don't wanna do that. In a pinch, you could take any folding knife, disengage the lock, okay, and just use that blade to baton if need be in an emergency situation. But obviously, it's not recommended, and certainly not recommended when it's locked open. So, anyway, we're gonna take this apart. Um, very common hardware on this. We have four body screws. These are T6 for the size, and our pivot screw is a T9. It's a very common setup for a uh, you know, medium-sized tactical folder. So, let's see what we got here. This is my T9. So we take the pivot out first. And we're just gonna take a look at this, just see what happened, what kind of damage occurred, you know, by abusing this knife and using it as it was not meant to be used. Swap that out for the T6. Plus I'll give you a, a little peek inside the old Kara Kara 2. So I had a bird Kara Kara. This is my first Kara Kara 2, the new generation. So I could tell you offhand, this is not a review or anything. Just stripped. Yeah, of course gonna give me a hard time. Hang on a second. Um, what I was going to say is I like the, uh, the grip on the handle here, even though it's not a review, I wanted to mention that. This, ah, crap. The head of that screw is stripped. So that is not good. That's going to be a huge pain, whoop, huge pain in the butt to deal with. Let me get the other ones out of here, see if I can get to that at the end. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jeff, why don't you uh, edit the video? I got stuff to do. I can't be watching you unscrew this. Come on, cut it down. I want a two minute video. Well, good for you. <laughs> this doesn't happen to be a two minute video right now. Sorry about that. Just have a roll sometimes. Okay. And the stubborn one. The head on this is stripped, so I'm not getting any kind of grip on this. This thing is not going to want to come out. First, let's see if we can uh, push our female out. Female side of our pivot screw. Which is, come on. There we go. Our blade will come out, and our washers. You see our lock back there. Keep all those washers together. Yep, yep. <laughs> what a pain. I gotta get this screw out. Friggin' A. You know what I'm saying? Friggin' A. <sighs> nope. Just freely spinning. Let me try to do one size up. See if that'll help. just right but it's stripped not helping me damn <laughs> oh man what a bummer thing to have going on right this second because I really want to take this apart to show you this and this is making it a huge pain in the balls that's right, 
the balls. Now I've had an experience with uh, some bird knives before and I haven't really had any problems personally with the uh, hardware stripping out or anything. So I wouldn't say this is a consistent problem but this Torx head just happens to be completely stripped and I just can't grip it. What the hell man? What the hell? Okay well, not much I can do about that right now. Maybe I can wiggle these other pieces out. Trying to make one of them their uh, educational videos for you. Uh, crap. Crap. <laughs> okay, well, for now, let's try to take the pieces out at least. You can see there's full uh, liners in here. I'll have to play with this later, get that screw out. But full stainless steel liners throughout. Here is our lock back. Ooh, well that's not good. See the damage right here? It has all kinds of jacked up. Hmm. That would certainly help create a little bit of blade play. Taking a closer look here. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure that that was created from blade play. I mean, from blade play. I'm not sure that was actually created from batoning. Here's our lockback. Pivots just like this, right? If you're batoning, your damage that would create uh, your blade play would be up here. Where this meets our tang. Okay, so here's how the lock, locking mechanism works, if you haven't seen a lockback before. They're all similar. You know, they're, they're slightly different in uh, size and stuff. But basically, that's what it all is. You know, that's what most... Um, can't tell is what all these. That's what most uh, lockbacks are, is some kind of a hook design where this fits into the uh, the base of the tang, and then when you push down, okay, push down on here, it pivots around that pin and basically just lifts up. And obviously, when this lifts up past that notch point, it can rotate. Okay, blades closed like this, it rotates open. Riding on here, and you hear that snap. That snap is these pieces connecting. Just like that. So, your damage would be here. This is really messed up here. But I don't know if that's from the factory or if that's from the batoning. Huh. If it was from the batoning, I don't see how that specifically would create blade play. It's still pinned in. You know, it's still not, it's not moving position up and down or left and right from, you know, its spot in the handle. It's mind-boggling. I don't know. By the way, there's our spring, which keeps the tension. Okay, unlock backs. That's why, you know, you, you have to actually push hard to unlock it. Because there's, there's you know, spring steel in there. And let me see. I can get in there more. Take a look at things, see what we got going on here. Because I'm a little confused. I'm baffled as to what really occurred that created this blade play. Take a look at this again. Maybe I'm missing something. If this, if this piece never moved inside the handle, there would have to be a little bit of damage that would occur either to the tang or to the top of this piece that would allow the wiggle. And these pieces aren't perfect. And this, this is the difference between a cheaper knife and a more expensive knife. It's stuff like this. Your tolerances, you know, they're overall fit and finish. You know, this piece, this locking piece, it wiggles. You can see the daylight through there. It's not, I mean, that's just a crude square on square action. Okay, this is the difference. You guys want to know why is this knife three hundred dollars? Why is that knife twenty bucks? What's the difference? Right here. Here's one of the big differences. You know, kind of a square into kind of a square hole. Okay, where you get a two hundred dollar knife and that is spots on the exact same shape. Okay, 
So anyway, I don't think this is any kind of, I mean, obviously the cutout didn't change just from batoning. So I don't know, I see some funky damage here. Obviously, I mean, you see it too. The steel is all pinched and marred up and stuff, but I'm trying to get a visual on how this can happen. It's batoning, I mean, you're obviously you'd be batoning the blade. Okay, you're creating that upward pressure. Your damage would be in here in the pivot. Huh. Huh. <laughs> yeah. This is one of them boring thinking videos. That's all I'm doing is kind of thinking aloud. Didn't know what to expect here. Certainly wasn't expecting this. Pain in the arse. If that thing came out, it would have been a little easier. I'm looking here more, but as far as I can tell, I can't see any more damage in the uh, liners or anything like that. And our spring didn't move at all. That didn't move out of position, so. Huh. <laughs> anyway. At least we can see the uh, tolerances in a bird knife. That's what you get. That's what your money's buying. Without the blade play, this is a great knife though. It's a really, really good buy if you guys are interested in some of the cheaper knives. The Burr line has always been recommended by myself. I like the Caracaras. I like the Hawkbills a lot. Um, the Metal Lark, I don't know if they're still making that model. You said one of those. That was really good. Uh, the Wings was a, a cool, you know, double-bladed uh, bird model. Just spewing off a couple of the names of the ones that I personally own. But I always found them to be really good for the money. And uh, be hard-pressed to find a full-lined knife, you know, for 15, 20 bucks. Not even $20. You can get a lot of bird knives a little cheaper now. So honestly, I'm not seeing much else here in way of damage that would cause more blade play. It's just this piece is mind-boggling. This thing, like I said, being pinched like that, is that factory, you think? You know, or is that, how would that happen? How would that damage occur? If it was pinched that badly, this piece of steel, surely there'd be some marks on the inside of our liners. You know, right where it would be pinched by the spine here. So let me spread these apart a little bit and see if I can look in there. You yeah, know, I don't see any damage whatsoever. Ow. Ow, it's friggin' pinching me. Take a look in there. I'm losing circulation of my finger. There's a little bit of a scrape there. But how the heck would that happen? You're banging on it? I'm trying, I'm trying to figure this out. I know this is kind of like, hey man, just get to the point. Well, I'm thinking. It's not planned. So, you hit the blade. Ba -doo -boo. And he pressures upwards. Huh. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I do know that's stripped, so that's annoying. And the blade's good. You know, keep the blade or something, some kind of project or something like that. See, so do a little sharpen here with the uh, Edge Pro Apex. You can polish up that edge. Um, just inspecting. Inspecting. Yeah, I don't really see much going on here that would cause. The only thing I could think of really. It's just when he was uh, batoning, it might have shifted. The whole assembly might have shifted just a little bit. You know, you heard the blade play, a lot of blade play, and I get little air quotes here, because a lot could be like, a, a millimeter is a massive amount of wiggle room. You know, that's like unacceptable. I'm not gonna use this piece of crap knife. I'm, we're talking about a millimeter. The tiniest, like the width of a hair, would give you, you know, a little bit of uh, wiggle that you might feel if you're really looking for it. So we're talking about really, really minute differences in tolerances. So there's a lot of factors here. I mean, this um, that's why I'm looking at all these parts. The, uh, the pivot pin, that could have been pinched just the tiniest bit. That would throw everything off. And I do see a lot of damage around here. I don't know whether you guys can see that, but there's a lot of scraping and marring on this. Um... The liners got me a little bit though. 
that was caused from the batoning. There would be significantly more damage inside the handle, which I really just don't see. So, the side to side, that's not an issue because that could have been, you know, the pivot screw backing out a little bit or just need to be adjusted. It's just the, the vertical, the up and down. This is what, what confused me is the blade play like this. You'd, I mean, no knife should have any kind of up and down whatsoever. Side to side, that's normal. That's fine. You need it. You need a little bit of wiggle room so you know it can fold in and out properly instead of being so stiff. But the up and down, that's that's something you can't fix. And that's you know inherently uh, a problem with some of the uh, lockbacks is having just a slight up and down. But what happens when you have a blade plane in a lockback like this is your your face plate, or I'm saying face plate, um, it's not the right term for this, but the, the face of this lockback piece would be marred or damaged. And you know what? It is. It's minute. Oh, you know what? I can really feel it. It's very hard to see, but just by running my finger across here, I can feel where the cheaper, you know, the stainless steel wasn't, say, heat treated to the same tolerances as you may do a blade or something like that. Um, it's just a standard, probably 300 series stainless. And it actually, from the batoning, got pinched back because I could feel the end raised up. It's pushing upwards, okay? So let me reenact this for you. The blade is in the handle, okay? You're batoning through wood, and you're slamming on it, you know, beating the crap out of it. And when you're beating the crap out of it, every time you hit it, it was pushing backwards. Pushing, 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 okay? The back of the uh, blade here against this. Okay, I mean they're, they're together in the handle, it's locked. But every time you do it, it's mushing against that. And what it did was it created, this, the steel here, what happened was it got pushed up and it moved out of the way ever so slightly. But enough to the point where now, when it locked, there's wiggle. So there you go, there's your blade play. Try to give you a shot of this. Oh, you know what? This is when the jeweler's loop comes in handy. And I don't have it in front of me, of course. So, hang on a second. God. Really should have edited this one. Okay. Yeah, here we go. loop de loop de loo To the rescue. Okay. Let me hold it like this. All right, now we can take a little better look at the damage. Mm-hmm. Turn this. Oh, the friggin' blade in the back. Making the perfect glare as to not see anything. Not smart. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work like that. Okay. Fumbling idiot is what I am right now. Okay, can you see that? So it looks like a little tiny skater's ramp or something. As I turn it, you can probably see the shadow. It really is so minute, but that is enough. You can see how that's pinched up and disformed. It's a disfigured lock face. <laughs> and that's enough. That right there, guys, that's enough to give you blade play. Significant blade play. That's all it takes. Focus! Damn it. Let's see my fingerprints on there. I gotta clean that off. Video's long enough already. It was nonsense. Well, you saw it. I don't even know why I'm showing it again. Beating a dead horse here, I guess. There we go. Ah, what a great shot. I'm amazing. I congratulate myself right there. Okay, so there you go. That's the cause of the blade play. And the whole story is get a good fixed blade. Good full tank fixed blade if you want to baton through wood. If all you have is your folder, just don't do it. Have some self-control, man. Good Lord. Just put it away. And if it's an emergency and you really need to do it, just disengage your lock. So when you're pounding on this thing and beating the living crap out of it, it's not pushing on the lock. Okay? Not good. This, not good. Okay? But if you separate them, you disengage the lock, then you're hitting that blade and nothing's happening to your lock. You know what I'm saying? So no good, perfect. No good, perfect. See? Easy. Thanks for your time. Thanks for sticking through this very, very strange video. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Take care.